This video is an introduction to the interface. Soundminer Basic is now 64-bit, and much of the development from our flagship V5 Pro has gone into its making. I'm on a Mac here, but everything being shown works the same if you own a Windows license. When you first launch Basic, it will ask you to make a new local database. There must be at least one local database for it to work. And even though I have some databases already built, let's go through that first-time process. Go to the Database menu and select Create a New Database. Give your database a name, and then directly below are your profile options. These create a schema or set of fields based on the work you may wish to do. In most cases, selecting Music and Effects is your best choice, as it brings back most fields. So keep in mind, you can't change the profile after the fact. You can also, for a small fee, request custom templates with custom fields. But note that custom means only seen by you. Others won't see those fields unless they have the same template. You can contact Sales for more info. Once created, your databases are selected here. To add sounds to a database, drag and drop the files onto the browser and let it work away. Keep in mind, large directories can take a long time, so be patient. Also be aware that with 64-bit, any older SD2 files or files without extensions are no longer compatible. You should be using WAV, AIF, or MP3 files, although FLAC and AUG files are now supported. Once scanned, BASIC will present you all the files it was able to scan. The number of files returned is shown here. You can double-click to begin playback or use your spacebar for play-pause. You can also click anywhere on the file to play, and your left-right arrows allow you to skip forward and back. Your up-down arrows allow you to navigate through your files. Each of the panes can be sized by dragging from the dividers. I can make the waveform editor bigger if need be, or expand out any of the other panes. You can drag across the waveform to make an edit. The yellow spring markers allow you to zoom in tight to refine your edit and then spring back up to full view. You have control over volume, which affects monitoring only, and you have a pitch slider here, so when copying and converting, you can apply the pitch to the newly created file. Before getting into anything else, let's get some instant gratification and transfer a file to Pro Tools. BASIC now supports spotting to the timeline for those applications that provide a spot API. Assuming Pro Tools is running, go to the DAW menu and make sure to select it. You should immediately see the connection prompt asking you to confirm the session information. Sometimes swapping manually between the two apps will wake it up if it doesn't immediately come forward. In Pro Tools, make sure to select a track type that is appropriate for the file being transferred. And there are a few other caveats you need to be aware of. The most notable are, don't use a track with elastic audio, don't have any windows in the front like the task window or workspace or anything like that, and no virtual desktops. Place the cursor on the track at the point where you want the item spotted. Go into SoundMiner Basic. Pick a file. You can make an edit. You can even add pitch and then hit Command S. That's it. Okay, now for those of you who want to stick around, let's go back and look at the interface in more depth. Your viewable fields can be dragged in the order you wish. Each field can be sized by dragging. And you can enable or disable fields from view by right-clicking or control-clicking on the header. Clicking the header forces a sort by that field, first in ascending, then in descending. And if you want to clear the sort order, you can do that from the database menu. You can alter your font and row sizes in the Preferences. The General tab gives you control over row height, font selection, and font size. Note that if using accented characters, make sure to select a Unicode font. You can also toggle the browser between two modes, Expanded or Condensed. The Expanded view is useful when incorporating artwork. I'll enable it so you can see. Another useful field to enable is the Mark field. This allows you to search and mark files you wish to return to after searching. You'll notice they turn a different color so it's visually apparent. 
and using the toolbar check marks icon you can recall all marked files. And from here you can review and select which ones you wish to transfer. Getting the browser returns to look just the way you want can also be saved in your layout area. Here you can store, recall, and even name your favorite screen sets. Row height, width, and display mode is all stored. So if working on effects, I can store a condensed view here so I can see more files. Perhaps for music, I prefer the more expanded view. Alt or Option clicking the screen buttons will also store the current view into that preset. Soundminer Basic supports having multiple databases, and the quick key access combos are noted. You have control over this in the preferences. By dragging the databases you want above this line, you control the order, and thus which quick keys get assigned. Note the question mark here. When you click it, it will send you to the V5 document area, which explains this area in more detail. Keep in mind, though, not all features are available in BASIC. Over in the right pane are a few other viewing options. The default is the metadata view. Artwork, if it exists, will always be shown at the top, and below are the metadata particulars of the selected item. Like database order, you can control the field order in this display from the preference pane. Anything above this line shows first, and in that order, and anything below sorts alphabetically based on there being metadata content. In other words, if a field is empty, it's sorted after those fields that have something to show. The right pane can be toggled open or closed using this button. The right pane is also a powerful search option, but we'll get into that in another video. Clicking Summary allows you to pick a field by which to cross-reference your batch of returns. Clicking Category will show me all the unique entries for that field for the subset of returns I'm currently viewing. Clicking any one of them will bring back all the files from that category entry. For music searching, you could view it broken down by library or composer, for example. The Artwork pane shows all the artwork that's associated with your files. Clicking on the artwork will return all the items associated with that artwork. Transfer History keeps a record of all your transcoded files, with the most recent being at the top. The pane can be cleared at any point in the submenu. Hovering over buttons will give you an explanation of the item. This button collapses all the fields to their tightest widths based on viewable metadata. Clicking one of your layout presets returns you to that saved state. Along the bottom are a set of mini tools. Hovering over them will explain what they do, and they in all cases have associated menu item options. Continuous play will autoplay a list of files. As soon as one file finishes playing, the next one will start, and so on. This item locates to the beginning of a selection. This acts as a play pause button. This reveals the path of the selected file. This transfers and converts a file to the transfer path. And this spots a file to a selected workstation. This last item is the hammer wrench. There are a few options in here. This allows the player to be decoupled from the browser so you can continue browsing while a longer file plays. There's a skip silence option, an autoplay option, and spot as region. This last option spots the region to the timeline but transfers the whole file in case you might need bits of audio later. Along the top are your main tools, and again, hovering over them provides a tooltip. The back button works like a browser in allowing you to step back through your previous state. The lock button allows you to lock off your search so you're only searching within a set of files. Be careful to unlock it when you're done. This icon here is the folder browser, which allows you to step through your path nesting in case you want to browse to a specific directory and bypass the search altogether. Find All brings back all items in a database. But because databases can get really big, this can become cumbersome, so there's a preference here to limit how many files are shown at any one time. The Same Folder tool allows you to browse the folder of a selected file. Note also that the full path in the interface can also be used to do the same thing. For instance, 
Hovering over any level of nesting in the path allows you to bring back all items from that level. This here will bring back the whole library. This will just be the items from that directory. This will be from the subfolder and this from the same folder. You might notice that as items are played, they change color. This is your play history being recorded. And clicking this button is a way to return all items played during the session. When you quit and relaunch, this history is cleared. If you don't like this feature and you don't want to have things changing colors, you can turn it off in the general preferences. The filter browser is covered in the search tutorial. Along with the left pane live link search, they can be two powerful features that allow you to initiate and refine searches. Randomize takes the returns and reshuffles them so that you don't always get the same thing in the same order. Every time you click it, it shuffles it again. We used to call this the roulette wheel. And it's quite useful when you want chance to show you something you might not otherwise see. And finally, there's the spot to DAW button, which does the same thing as the quick key command S. Speaking of quick keys, BASIC has a full complement of assignable quick keys. Just about any function can be put on a key combination. And staying in the sound minor menu, BASIC offers control over library waiting. You can rank your favorites by moving them to the top. This means that when doing a general search, your preferred libraries will appear closer to the top depending on your keywords. The sound output device controls which audio interface is used for playing files. Keep in mind Avid does not allow sharing of its interface when Pro Tools is running, and BASIC, unlike our other versions, does not include rewire, so you'll have to use a secondary interface or route the built-in audio card to a console or set of auxiliary inputs. I'm on a native system here, so sharing isn't a problem. The Reveal Support folder, along with the Help Menu Save Logs, are important. They're important because when contacting support, we may ask you to look at these two items. The Reveal Support folder shows you where your databases are kept. Don't alter this folder while the app is running, but you can use it to make backup copies of your databases in case something goes bad. The Save Logs folder is important because sometimes we may ask you to provide those logs in order to see what may be going wrong. And while we're on the subject of maintenance, database maintenance is important, especially if you have spent hours making and scanning a big database. Back it up is rule number one. Second, familiarize yourself with the database full index. Every database has its own index. The main search bar uses this index for speed. It doesn't search every character in every field that would be too slow. Instead, it depends on key fields and terms indexed in them. Check the most appropriate fields for your database, keeping in mind you don't want to check off fields that don't have any data or aren't important. These are the default fields when you create a music and effects database. You can further refine it by unchecking things you might not find useful and allowing it to rebuild. If it's a very big database, it may take a few minutes to rebuild, but optimizing will make searches faster. Okay, if you've mastered all of this, you're ready to view the search and transfer tutorial.